It's Wednesday. That means it's another edition of Speed Chronicles here on the Rev TV YouTube channel. Thanks for checking it out once again this week. At Todd Lewis Sports at Rev TV are the handles on both X and Instagram to ask questions, provide a little feedback and guidance, some suggestions of things you might want to see in the future. Still working out all the logistics for this and just seeing where this goes. It's a bit of an experiment and we're uh, we're pleased with it so far. It will continue and we'll, as I say, see where it develops, see where it goes uh, from here. What a couple of weeks we are enjoying if you are in Southern Ontario in terms of motorsports. We have just concluded a couple of days ago the IMSA weekend at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the Chevrolet Grand Prix, of course, the highlight event for the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for IMSA. But we also had Michelin Pilot Challenge, VP Racing Fuel Series, and I, I don't want to say it's my favorite because I don't like to choose favorites, but I always love and enjoy the MX-5 Cup. It is such a fun series to watch. And if you get the opportunity to see it in person, do it. You'll love it. You'll enjoy it. It's it, it's super close racing. It's spec cars. They're all built and prepared the same way. The teams can fine tune them just a little bit, but you're 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 restricted in terms of the amount of adjustments and setup. And it's just so much fun because the competition is so close. You don't know who's going to win until they're about 50 feet from the the finish line at the end of the 45 minute race. It's a super fun series. Anybody that drives them loves them. It's a great stepping stone as well. Connor Zilich was uh, there this weekend. Um, didn't score a victory, but he he has won an MX-5 Cup. He's won pretty pretty much everything this year. He's going back to the the Rolex 24 and the 12 Hours of Sebring. So I had a good chat with with him and did a bunch of other interviews as well. That will be coming up on a, an episode of Rev Culture on Rev TV in a week and a half or so. I believe the debut is going to be July the 29th. So uh, Connor Zilich, we had a great chat with Robert Wickens. Uh, it's, it's become an annual event at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Get some some talk about his season in Michelin Pilot Challenge and a look ahead to the future. He's got a couple things percolating. So hopefully they, they play out as well. I'll talk more about a Robert Wickens interview in a couple of seconds too, but if, if you didn't uh, catch all of it, you can, you can go back and, and look at the, the videos online. Uh, WeatherTech was a terrific race. Michelin pilot challenge was a terrific race. Roman DeAngelis was a winner uh, a, 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 as well as Robert Wickens and his teammate, Harry Godsacker. So some nice Canadian feels to it as well. Everybody spoke highly about the event. A tremendous crowd once again at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Camping jammed up, parking jammed up. It was a it was a bit of a backlog trying to get in on Sunday morning because the race was an early start because of television commitment. So it was, but again, just a a, a sensational weekend, really super enjoyable, and it's leading into. Another big weekend, which is, of course, the Ontario Honda Dealers Indy Toronto. And I'm saying it deliberately and slowly because I'm going to say it a few thousand times this weekend working at the event. Ontario Honda Dealers Indy Toronto. That's the the new name of it. The Ontario Honda Dealers are are getting themselves highlighted because they've been such great supporters of the event for so many years and 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 good for them. But I'm excited to see what happens on the streets of Toronto this weekend. Christian Lundgaard was the winner a year ago, first time winner in the NTT IndyCar Series. So it will be nice to see if he can he can go back to back. Hasn't had a victory since. We'll uh, we'll we'll enjoy getting uh, that angle of the the story as well. Watching that, so the the USF Pro Championships are coming as well. USF 2000, USF Pro 2000, hometown racer Matt Clark will be back on the streets, and of course we have. Canadian content in the SCCC, Sports Car Championship Canada, and the Radical Cup Canada, who are joining forces with Blue Marble Radical once again this year. I think it's 39 or 40 Radicals that will be on track at Exhibition Place this weekend. It uh, makes for a very busy racetrack, but makes for a lot of drama and a lot of fun as well. The, the, the initial... Um, the initial reports are we're in for a good weekend in terms of weather, which is great. The The crowd is trending in the right direction. If you were there a year ago or saw it on, on television a year ago, it was a tremendous crowd one year ago. Unfortunately, NASCAR Canada Series is not part of the event this year. The schedules did not align. I can give you a bunch of reasons as to why it happened, but NASCAR put their schedule together. It didn't line up with the Ontario Honda dealers in the Toronto this year. So they're in Saskatoon this weekend and not in Toronto. 
I can tell you that there have been discussions about correcting that issue. So hopefully for 25, it's back on track and NASCAR is back as part of the uh, Indy in Toronto because it's it's the right place to be. It's the right thing to do. Uh, so Saskatoon is on a weekend, I think is going to do very well. It's unfortunate. I can't, I can't be in two places at once. So I'm not going to be at that race, but I, I look forward to a good event in Saskatoon. I'll be back with the series a week from now when they go out to Edmonton, but looking forward as I always have to this event in Toronto, I, I wasn't at the first few because I was going through school and busy and working and couldn't do it, but started to go in the uh, in the early 90s and watching Al Unser Jr. win a few, watching Michael Andretti win a whole bunch of them, including his seventh victory in 2001, which was the first indie race in Toronto that I actually got to work for television and interview Michael Andretti afterwards. So that was a really cool experience. That's still one of the highlights that I have tucked away in the, in the back of my brain. But I, I there's, there's so many memories from, from Paul Tracy winning Hinchcliffe and Wickens uh, being there and, and doing well and succeeding. Unfortunately, neither of them did get the victory, but when Robert came back a few years ago after his crash and, and drove that hand control car around the grounds at exhibition place, the, the ovation and reception he received was was absolutely extraordinary so we're looking forward to another good weekend in toronto um again with all the different series the weather is great it's uh it, it, it'll it'll be fun to watch and and just to see what's what kind of stories develop this weekend another story i wanted to mention from this past week that is a story but i don't want it to be a story but because it is a story i'll talk a little bit about it and my hope that it's no longer a story going forward. Have I confused you yet? Probably a little bit. In a social media post this past week, Ralph Schumacher came out as gay and said that he was in a relationship with a same-sex partner. And this, of course, got an awful lot of attention from different outlets. I'm happy for Ralph Schumacher that he's in a, a good place and in a good relationship. I'm happy that he feels comfortable enough speaking about this issue and stating the fact that he is in a same-sex relationship with someone that he cares about and cares about him. This is the part where it's it's still a story, and I'll talk about it because it is a story, that someone's sexual orientation is a big deal. It's unfortunate that it's still a story. We can all say that we're, it, it doesn't matter to us, but it does matter to a lot of people. I have friends and people that I'm close with that are not heterosexual, members of the LGBTQ plus community. I'm perfectly fine with that. It does not change my, my affection and feelings for them, nor should it. It's their business. It's not mine. And I'm happy that Ralph Schumacher felt comfortable enough to come out with that social media post and say that he is in a, a good place and in a same-sex relationship. And when this stops becoming a story, then I'll stop talking about it. But until then, there's still work to do. There's still growth and education and understanding that needs to happen. I hope it happens quickly. I hope it happens soon because we'll be in a better place if it does. And I think everyone will live happier lives. I mentioned another interview with Robert Wickens. I did one with him on the weekend. And as mentioned, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll air soon on, on Rev TV. But I watched one this morning on one of the national breakfast shows that isn't sports oriented. And I was, I was actually on the, the, uh, an elliptical at the time at the at the gym, and I'm watching it, so I couldn't hear the audio. So I went back and I watched the whole interview online afterwards. And it was kind of bothering me, and unfortunately, my concerns were founded when I watched the interview back. I think it's wonderful that they had Robert Wickens on to talk about his victory at CTMP, been the first time he'd he'd won in a couple of years in his Brian Herta Autosport uh, uh, Hyundai for the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series. He and Harry Gottsacker won the championship a year ago, but they didn't win a race, so they got a victory this year. And that's one of the things that Robert and I, I talked a little bit about. But I'm watching the interview, and the hosts who were doing the interview asked Robert about it, and he told the story about the victory. But the video that I was watching while Robert was talking about CTMP and his Michelin Pilot Challenge 
victory in his Brian Herta Autosports Hyundai had nothing to do with that race or that weekend or that series because it was video of the Formula E test that he conducted a couple of weeks ago. Now, I'm I, I'm not going to crap on people the way the internet goes crazy about this stuff, but I will say that this is part of the thing that frustrates motor racing fans. I understand and accept that auto racing and motorsports are niche sports. They are not the most popular. They're not the Toronto Maple Leafs or NHL hockey or anything like that. I understand that. I can deal with that. But you wouldn't put a baseball player on screen for an interview and run in video of a football game because that's the equivalent. You wouldn't put a hockey player on screen and run in video of a baseball game. All you had to do was read the social media post, which is probably where you found the story, and understand that this video that is on social media is not from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. I assure you, if you had taken one little step and reached out to CTMP or the team, or probably even Robert directly, they would have pointed you in the right direction and helped you. He was great. I don't know that he could see the the video that they were rolling, but he did a very good job of talking about the win and that it was for B, BHA and it was at CTMP and all the rest of it. But this is the frustrating part. So we can we can be better. And I guess that's kind of maybe that's the theme of this episode. Let's let's be better. So we'll we'll go with that and we'll end on that that positive, hopeful look forward. Thanks for checking out this edition of speed chronicles back again next wednesday thanks for checking out uh, rev culture the new episode i believe will debut on july the 29th have a great weekend at the races if you're coming to the uh, ontario honda dealers in the toronto uh, please make sure you say hi see you next wednesday